go. All right, so in this video, I'm going to describe a very important element of the kidney. That is the microvasculature of a nephron or of the nephrons. It's really very important to understand this integrate uh, system because we know that the kidneys are cleansing our blood all the time per minute, okay? So how they are doing this, it's a very complicated process and it involves a complicated network of blood vessels. So here in front of you is a, is a sketched drawing showing you uh, this is one renal, lob, uh, renal lobe which is having um, the cortex and the medulla which is in the form of a pyramid and these are the vessels which are serving the cortex, the arcuate artery and the arcuate vein. And if you re recall from the blood supply that the, each arcuate artery is giving off, like from the arcuate arteries are radiating off the interlobular arteries. And each interlobular artery is going to branch down into multiple afferent arterioles, okay? Each afferent arteriole, by the way, I want you to appreciate the change in the color. So the freshly, uh, you know, the fresh red, bright red color is represent representing the afferent arteriole. And the purplish pink color is representing the efferent arteriole. The afferent is entering the Bowman's capsule and it's forming the glomerulus or the tuft of capillaries. And the efferent is draining out that tuft of capillary or it's leaving the glomerular capsule, okay? Now each nephron, when we talk about the microvasculature, we have to keep in mind that the, each nephron is closely associated with two capillary beds. One is this glomerulus and the other capillary bed is the peritubular capillaries. The peri means it's around, all around, like a mesh, okay, a wire mesh. These peritubular capillaries create a bed, and both of these beds are, are performing different functions, completely different from each other, okay? Also, I want you to keep in mind that all these capillaries are fenestrated type. They have big pores, whether they are in the glomerulus or they are around the tubules. Okay, now first we'll take the glomerulus. The glomerulus, if like this is a typical cortical nephron. We have another type of nephron, which is less in percentage. That is the juxta medullary nephron. And we'll talk about both. Okay, so I'm taking the example of a typical cortical nephron, which is representing the 85% of the nephrons, okay? So we'll talk about the glomerulus. It's a specialized, it, it is specialized for filtration only, okay? It's unlike any other capillary bed in the body in a way that it is both fed and drained by the arterioles. There is no venule involved. So we will call it a pure arterial capillary bed. That's one feature which is unique to the glomerulus. The afferent arterioles, as you can see over here as well, they arise from the interlobular arteries that run through the renal cortex. So this is one interlobular artery giving off one arte afferent arteriole, which is entering the, the capsule and forming the glomerulus. As we know that the arterioles are the high resistance vessels, okay? And also the afferent arteriole has a larger diameter than the efferent arteriole, and you can see this, okay? Therefore, due to this arrangement, the blood pressure within the glomerulus is extraordinarily high. 
and this easily forces fluid and solutes out of the blood into the capsular space, which is also known as the filtration space or the urinary space, whatever you feel like calling it. Okay, this is special structural arrangement, like first of all, the arterioles themselves are resistance vessels. They, create, they, they generate this peripheral resistance everywhere in the body. But we mean, when we talk about the glomerulus specifically, we can appreciate another fact that the afferent vessel or afferent arteriole, which is serving the glomerulus, it's feeding the glomerulus, capillary bed, is larger in diameter or caliber. So a large amount of blood can enter in a controlled way, of course, in, inside the glomerular capillary bed. But the, 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 the vessel which is going to drain this bed is the efferent arteriole, and it is lesser in caliber or diameter. So they would be, the, the net result would be high pressure in the capillary bed. And this extraordinarily high pressure will lead to pushing the fluid and solutes outside the blood vessel into the capillary, into the capsular space, okay? Now, most of the filtrate, now we'll talk about the second capillary bed, what it is, that is doing, okay? Most of the filtrate, about 99% of it, is reabsorbed by the renal tubules and returned to, lip, to the blood. How does this return happening? That's the question. So there comes the role of the second capillary bed. That is the peritubular capillaries in the cortical nephrons. And when we come to this special type of the nephron that is juxtamedullary, we can see that the loop of Henley of these nephrons are very long and they are deeply placed into the medullary substance. So the peritubular capillary bed, which is surrounding this long loop of Henle, it's like the, the, the capillaries are not like a mesh. They're, they're not, they just not are like a small wires. They actually are long channels. So we call them, they are straight. They run parallel to the loop of Hinde, most of them. So we call them vasa because they are vessels, recta, they are straight. So the vasa recta is a special feature of only the juxtamedullary nephrons. The cortical nephrons, they don't have vasa recta because they are small and their loop of Hinde is pretty much close to the outer zone of the medulla. So there is just a, the, 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 the peritubular capillaries, they loop around just like a spaghetti. Okay, so both vasorecta and the peritubular capillaries are the same thing, but because of the, their size and their shape, their names are different. Okay, now what is happening that the filtrate has been received by the capsular space and has been pushed down into the first part of the renal tubule, which is the proximal convoluted tubule. And we, as we have discussed it before, that maximum reabsorption is taking place in the proximal convoluted tubule, okay? Because if it has the brush border, it's reabsorbing, it's, you know, uh, taking back all the things which are required by the body back into, uh, back from the filtrate. So where, that thing is going, where all those molecules are going back, going. I, I said that they are returned back to the, to the blood. How? Because these peritubular capillaries, they just like the glomerular capillaries are fenestrated. They are, they are having large pores. And you know that the efferent arteriole, because it's narrow in diameter, it's, it, it's, it's supposed to increase the, the intraglomerular blood pressure. But at the same time, the hydrostatic pressure inside the peritubular capillary bed would be decreased. So the solute and the molecules that have been claimed back by the, the epithelial lining of the proximal tubule and also the loop of Henle and the distal tubule, they will be, you know, under the uh, you know, influence of pressure difference, they will be 
entering these capillaries, okay? And what is happening then, these capillaries, the peritubular capillaries, as you can see over here, look closely. The peritubular capillaries, they are, they, this bed is a, is a usual capillary bed. It has, at one end has an arteriole, but the other end is a venue, okay? So they will be, this, these peritubular capillaries will be dumping their, you know, substances rich blood into the, the venules. And these venules, eventually, many of them, thousands of them, they will form the interlobular vein, okay? The interlobular veins will be draining into the arcuate veins. The arcuate veins will be draining into the interlobar veins. And then you know, you have done it in the blood supply segment, that the interlobar veins eventually will form the renal vein. Okay, so that is how the, what I said is true, that uh, in summary, I can say that one capillary bed is filtering out the blood and cleansing it and also, you know, pushing all the ingredients, solid substances, along with the, the fluid, plasma fluid, into the uh, renal tubules. The other capillary bed is reclaiming all that filtrate, almost all, because I said that 99% of the filtrate, which has been you know, deposited here, has been reclaimed by the other capillary bed, that is the peritubular. So it's important to understand the mechanics involved in the filtration process and also what role these two capillary beds are playing. One bed is a pure arterial, arterial bed and the other bed is the, the regular capillary bed with one end made up of or fed by the arterial, the other end has been drained by a venule. So here is, is your other illustration which is actually showing us how this is happening. So this brown arrow is indicating the filtrate, how it's being forced out of the capillary bed into the capsular space. And this filtrate is descending, it's trickling down to the proximal tubule. These orange arrows are representing the rate of absorption, reabsorption. So most of the filtrate has been reclaimed by the peritubular capillaries and can you appreciate the fact that these are fenestrated capillaries and they are running parallel and all around the uh, tubules of the kidney, okay? And there is something else, a blue arrow. Many substances have been secreted into the lumen of the tubule from the blood. And they are, of course, we can understand that these substances are the, those which are not required by the body. They are toxic substances. They have been released from the blood back into the, into the tubules. 